<laughs> to me, I just talk about like horses and dogs and all that stuff. Uh, okay. I would love to talk about uh, your your dog Jack. Jill, Jack and Jill. I should have named my dog Jack. How cute. Oh, and, and I have, uh, well, it's Jack and Bella. I didn't, I had Jack first and then Bella came next. Well, and then before that, I had another silver poodle named Izzy or Isabel, um, but uh, Izzy for short. So cute. You're such an animal lover. I was watching an ET special with you about you visiting a farm and animal rights because you're an animal humane activist. You do so many events with your charity, the fluff ball, if I'm saying that right. Yes. And I just love that you stand up for animals. I just think it's so cute. And like, you're the cutest thing ever. So of course, you're supporting something that's like, you know, like, hey, we need, we need, we're cute. We need some support too. You have raised a lot of money for animals just from being, you know, using your celebrity and who you are and connecting with some really amazing people to put on some great events and you're still doing it. You can still donate guys. So make sure you guys check out her, her, her website, but Emmanuel, I just, everybody knows you. Okay. So I, I get off the phone and the online with Leslie of the promotion PR, your publicist. And I say to her, who do you have this year? That's the hottest thing. Let's put out the right people this year. Okay. Cause we're an independent magazine. We, we root for the little guy. We work for the big guy we work for CBC and everything. So she said, well, you need Emmanuel. And I said, okay, like, who's that? And then she sends me and I drop my phone. I, I, I click and I'm just like, you're kidding me. And I screamed. I was like, One Tree Hill was my life when I was younger. <laughs> it's like, I, I needed to be like Chad Michael Murray's uh, girlfriend. Anyways, yeah. that didn't happen. But you got to work with him. You have been on every show. You know, you have some really cool shows are out right now. Millennial Mafia, Paw Twins, it's coming out with Kevin Sorbo, where you play his wife. You're playing a lot of wives here, I we're see. Not, we're, not married. <laughs> we're not married in the show. We're, we're love interests in the show. Maybe love we'll interest, married, you never know. Same thing. Same, <laughs> exciting for the audience to see what, where are you going to go then? That's even better. You got Two and a Half Men, where you play, played the sexy ex-fiance that was hilarious. But then you went into CSI New York. You were in 25 episodes of that. That was a huge, huge one, you know? Uh, Lieutenant Dan, I can't believe you got to work with that guy. My name is escaping him at the moment. And then Lost Girl, that was a huge one. Covert Affairs, everybody loved this. Rogue, that was cool. Anyway, there is, you've been in everything since 1995. Like, honest to God, every show I've seen you pretty much in, except for maybe just a few of your, your newest ones. So it's an honor to be able to talk with you today. Oh, thank you. I, I feel I feel very flattered that you <laughs> that uh, that you're excited. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All the men and women are excited to hear about what what. How are you? We've all seen you for literally two, like almost two decades, and you're still young. You've been doing this since you're so young. You know, Charmed. I was a huge fan of Charmed. Like all you gals that were on Charmed all look very similar. I noticed that. And I thought that was like the standard of beauty at that time. You know, like Megan Fox came in at her time. But like with you girls, it was, you guys were like the hottest cast ever, I think, at that point in, in time. Um, what does it feel like, you know, to work on yourself all the time the way you do? Because to be, you know, someone as structured as you, you run a charity, you are fit as heck still, and you're mentally sound, you know, like we all go through a lot, but it takes a lot of serious uh, development, being serious at what you're doing with your craft and your business and your view. I like you're a serious actress. It's beautiful. It's a good influence for people today, for young women. Um, well, when you say the mentally stable part, I'm not so sure that depends uh, on who you yeah. talk to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe an ex-boyfriend might not say that, but who cares? We are on your side, girl. Come on. Not my problem, right? Um, <laughs> it's their so problem. They wanted you and they couldn't have you. That's usually what's up, <laughs> up anyway. <laughs> um, I think a lot, you know, for me, a lot of it is discipline and mm -hmm. having structure really helps. That's why I think 
also, you know, this past year has been really challenging and luckily I mm. do have some sort of structure and discipline in my life <clears throat> where, you know, that really, you know, and because I also am very keen on that, you know, even before this past year and a half or so happened, um, I think that helped me through, you know, these difficult times, just have no, like, I, I am very disciplined. I am, you know, I, mm -hmm. I get up, I go, you know, I either go to the gym or I go to the barn to ride my horse. And then I, and then I go to the gym or do my workout at home. Now um, I, you know, every morning I journal, um, I've Ooh. been, you know, I started meditating. I didn't always do this, but I, this is fairly new. So I should probably, you know, do it for more than, 20 days before I say it's a new thing that I'm doing but oh yeah the 30 <laughs> days till it's like a whole thing mm -hmm. yeah but like in the last you know in the last few weeks I've been doing a lot of, I've been doing a lot of research and reading and things and I started meditating even though I knew this was good for me long ago I just you know I didn't like to sit still for that long um <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> I like to move around and do stuff and be active and uh, but I've been forcing myself to just get up. First thing I do is meditate. Um, and then I journal and then, you know, I get on with my day, whether that's a workout and then a ride or vice versa, uh, walk my dogs. Cause they're a big part of my life. Obviously they need to mm -hmm. go outside and have a, have a, 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 an active social life. And, um, and before I go to bed every night, I meditate. Um, mm -hmm. so it's, uh, I think, you know, and I take, I, you know, I try to eat well, I try to take care of my body and, and my skin and my health in general. I'm not perfect. I, you know, yes, you are. Who said you aren't? What the hell? I'll get, I'll kill them. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I like to eat junk food here and there. I like, you know, I love chocolate. I love, you know, and I let my half, like I, I do what I want when I want within reason. And so that I have some sort of balance. I don't, mm. Try Balance, to do yeah. extreme or, or uh, too extreme or, or not at all. I try to I try to have as much balance as I can, create as much balance as I can in my life these days. Um, again, it's mm -hmm. not always the way. Yeah. Sometimes I fall out of that balance, and I, you know, I, I I become very unhappy, and I'm like, what's going on? What's and then I look back. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. I need to sort of shift back into uh, into balance. So. I know nobody talks about I well there's so many podcasts about that whatever about saying that but nobody you know in film talks about this aspect what it takes to be a star or just a starving artist that too for mo most of us <laughs> um, like the mentality of the nose the getting up in the morning and not feeling like you look great but having to look good anyway when you're on camera and of course when the day before you do camera you either get your period or you get <laughs> acne or something happens and it's like a, a whole thing sometimes i don't know about you but this is happening yeah, for me yeah, absolutely. well there's, and luckily, there's so many elements right there are a lot of elements and luckily you know when you have a job and and you're going to work there's a team of people to help you cover up things like zits and bad hair days and you know and they fix all that stuff for you <laughs> and, so, and they're cleaning and you know but um but yeah like you do the best you can leading up to those times and not things don't always go as planned and you just have to sort of roll with it and stay open to you know the changes and and what comes um, but you have, you know, people are like, oh, you know, I, 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 I wanted to be an actress or I wanted to, you know, I want to or people who want to get into the, uh, the business. Yes. And I say, I'm like, is there anything else that you'd love to be doing? And they're like, oh, maybe I'm like, if there is anything else, <laughs> go do that. Because if you don't love this and you can't think of anything else that you would rather be doing, then, you know, that's the only, like, it's, it's not an easy path and you've got to really want it. You've got to really, really want it. You've got to be willing to roll with the ups and downs. And it's not, you know, you could out the gate, be on a show and have this wonderful career. And then five years later, your show's over yeah. and no one wants to hire you, you know, and then you've got to figure out what, what to do next and how to transition out of that and how to, you know, reinvent yourself. Um, or it might be the opposite. You have, you know, nothing for a really long time and you're working and working and working. You feel like you're getting absolutely nowhere. Yeah. Um, you know, and a lot of people give up at that point and, and it's easy to give mm -hmm. up at that. I mean, I've, you know, I've been 
in those places where I've been like, wow, like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. And then I think, well, what else am I going to do? <laughs> what else do I put my whole life to? <laughs> like, well, I guess, well, I guess we just have to work harder <laughs> and we keep going and, you know, and it, and it, yeah, I keep going yeah. at the end of the tunnel, even if you don't see it right away, if you keep going, like eventually uh, you'll come out the other side. Sometimes it's faster than other times, but there's always, you just have to want it bad enough. Like anything in life, I think. And put your whole self to it. Yeah. It, the journey of being a successful artist, who knows when somebody starts, it's not even about, are they going to become successful? It's like about their dream, what they want to try to achieve with kind of who they are. So I've been asking, this is the I'm here with collaboration with uh, the people's, um, uh, the promotion people, and we're doing the dreamer series. So we're asking everybody, what was their dream before they really even became successful and started all this? And what do you think about, you know, dreaming big? I, I think it's important to dream big. And, you know, I've been guilty of, of, of uh, playing too small sometimes. I think, you know, you have to go be, it's easy to just dream within the limits of your reality. And then without thinking like, no, 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 if I could have anything that I wanted, if I could do and be anything, what would it look like? And you have to, it's, it's, it takes practice to sort of think about those. And, you know, that doesn't mean it's going to happen right away, but it's, you've got to have a vision of what that looks like in order to have something to work towards. You can't just be like, well, I don't know. I'm just going to do this for a while and see what happens. It's like, well, okay, th that might you get you so far. Um, but you need, you need a, a, a vision and a, a drive like, uh, and, you know, a burning desire to want to, to achieve those things. Cause if mm. you don't ultimately, you know, uh, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work out for you <laughs> or not. <the> <laughs> <way>. <laughs> uh, so I think, yeah, I think having a dream and really, and pursuing that dream, not just thinking positive, but actually taking, you know, taking action, having a vision, taking action towards your vision and allowing things to come to you and to happen and uh, the experiences to happen and to, to embrace those experiences, whether they're difficult or they're fun or what, whatever, whatever comes, you just, you know, uh, you embrace it and you work through it and you enjoy it. Yeah. I see that in you. You're so, <laughs> you're so happy in all your social media photos. And I'm just like, man, she's so happy. What is she taking? I want that. <laughs> it's called social media, not reality. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I can, people can see it in your eyes. You know, like a lot of the characters you do play, you, you have like a soft side to it. Even if you're like a serious like investigator or something, or, you know, there's always like a kindness in your eyes. I see that's like very relatable and, and lovable. You know, you're not just like nasty. Like sometimes you can see your hurt in there and you're like, well, she's mad, you know, like you're trying to take her baby away. Like, Hey, like in some of the films that you starred where you're a, a crazy mother. <laughs> um, so let's talk more about, um, the you know when you star in projects and like somebody comes to you and says okay I want you to carry this movie what goes through your head it's not that easy starring in projects that people just they oh everyone says to you probably I wish I was an actor it's like do you though do you <laughs> <laughs> there's so many elements of promoting yourself pushing yourself to like you said reinvent yourself all the time so people don't typecast you and all that and it's always up to the artist to really give her with that but nobody tells anybody that you know like you have to be versatile like like it says that uh on your social media you're very open to different things. And I think that's what makes you so happy, actually. That's, that's why your eyes are so happy or something. <laughs> I think it's important to have uh, a focus and, and hobbies and things outside of work. I mean, you know, for example, the whole social media thing. Um, you know, that's great. It's part, of, it's part of the business. You know, this notion that everybody's happy and looks perfect all the time is the facade that, you know, social okay. media sort of has it. because it's, you know, it's a fantasy. It's 
people watch television and movies to escape. They don't watch to necessarily get a dose of what they have in their in their own life at the moment, or you know, they, depending on what show they're watching. You know, if you want that, there's shows you can watch. Um, but uh, <laughs> for people, you know, same with social media. It's an escape. It's like, oh wow, you know, I want to aspire to have that person's life or the way they are. I don't try to. I mean, the stuff I put up, I try to be true to myself and who I am, and you know, and my hobbies and the things I love in my life. However, Ooh. there is an aspect to it that is a business and there's uh, an, a, a certain aesthetic to it. There's a certain sort of- um, Intention, uh, yeah. An intention and a dem demographic that you're targeting and, and things like that, not in an unnatural way, but just naturally that's sort of how it evolves and happens. And um, so it's, hmm. uh, people have to understand that it's also, you know, it's a marketing tool and, and part of the business. I, I'm not posting three, four times a week because, you know, I have nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You have people telling you, Hey, you should probably put, yeah, there's strategies or there whatnot. Strategy. And, and it's staying relevant and staying visible in the public eye. And it is and yeah. now because, you know, there's not a whole lot of sort of red carpets and events and things like that to go to that in the past would be, um, how you, know, you do it, yeah. Stay somewhat visible in, in, in the public eye. Social media is a big way that it's, done, you know, a very major way that it's done now. And especially, and also with, hmm. you, know, for, uh, you know, for sponsorships and advertisers and things like that, they look at those things. Um, and, yes, and they do. With, you know, with jobs, like they, they look at your social media following now and say, you know, and think about like, oh, does she have a big following? What's the engagement like? What's, you know, those are all factors now. So it is just, it's a necessary part of the business. Yeah, you grew up in the times where agents did, you know, most of the work and uh, with that kind of stuff, because there wasn't social media and, and events to take bad photos of you the way things are now. <laughs> a lot of things get captured and <laughs> that shouldn't. But, um, you know, I'm really curious about One Tree Hill, um, Two and a Half Men, mistresses and saw to there's so many you guys literally when i googled you there is 112 imbd actor credits so i felt like okay if we're gonna go down this list guys this is gonna be a long podcast <laughs> so we'll only talk about some of uh, of the projects let's start with one tree hill because that i and i want to say this to you Cause you'll think like, oh, okay, I get it. I get why she's so crazy. <laughs> when I was, you know, I'm, I'm a foreign gal. And when I was watching, when I was younger, um, there's not that many people in this era of like the late nineties, early two thousands or whatever that were foreign and, and look, you know, like you exotic um, in some formats. And so when I saw you in one tree Hill, you know, dark hair, dark eyes, just like me. I was just like, oh my God, there's a, you know, that whole feeling of like, I see someone like me. Mm -hmm. uh, so people who are, you know, not just the typical say next girl, you know, you have kind of like a, you're a very sexy gal in, uh, in your day. Like, of course, you know, that's what they portray every gal like on TV. But um, I just felt like always you were somebody that I could connect to that was like, hey, she looks like me. And that to me, that was so important because there was nobody that looked like me on, on hot TV shows like that. So I connected with you because of, uh, because of that and charmed. I loved you on charmed as well on everything. <clears throat> no, that's, um, uh, that's interesting that you say that's really, <clears throat> yeah. like now it's obviously, you know, the pendulum has swung. Um, it's funny because like I was always like oh she's too ex they, you know they, it would always be exotic, she's yeah. exotic or she's we're not quite sure where she she's not girl next door but then she's not this and it like you know they could figure out where to put me and then yeah. you know, it's like yeah she's just not exotic enough I'm like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> okay like, put some cat eye on me like, what, what's the what 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 is it then what, what am I supposed to <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, it's a confusing so, world yeah, you know again though it's like it's the nature of the business it's like everyone's going to tell you that you're not this or you're not that or you're you're too much of that or you're too much you know oh they want a blonde or oh they want a brunette or they want a redhead you're not gonna you know it's like it could it, so much of it has nothing to do with you and your talent yeah. 
yeah so much of it is like just the aesthetic of it and what they're looking for that way you might look you might remind them one of the producers of his ex-wife who oh yes you know, exactly this is true <laughs> i mean it could have absolutely nothing you could be the best actor on the planet and he's like she looks like my ex-wife get rid of her you know <laughs> but, you never you know i mean i it's it's not that is not something that is not that it hasn't happened before so yeah not, but like you know it's happened um so it's just yeah it's you can never you have to just kind of do your thing and put the blinders on to some degree and yeah not stuff affect you because if you do you'll go nuts you'll it'll it'll drive you crazy because there's always there's always going to be something that somebody wants that you don't have or yeah you know they want somebody younger or you're or you're too young or you're too old or you're not pretty enough or you're too pretty or you're too you know <laughs> yeah you're too fat you're too skinny it's like you will never fit whatever mold for everybody um yeah. so that's why it's important to just stay on course and do what you do and be the best at what you do and be irreplaceable you know um in yeah you, be your you, own character yeah mm -hmm. kind of Oh, interesting. You know, I really liked you in Saul. I watched that as soon as I you said, okay, you're, you're doing Emmanuel or interviewing <laughs> Emmanuel. Uh, I was been looking you uh, watching your shows like here and there for like a week. <laughs> and I really liked Saul. You're so serious in it. I couldn't believe it. You usually have like a quirky fun side or like sparky, like kind of feisty side to you or something within your character. But, uh, you know, you're like a strong, motherly, just, you know, keeping, it, it, you know, her husband going kind of thing. So, which, which, what, what are we talking about? Which it's, movie? It's called Saul. Oh, the 2014. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I was playing Mary Magdalene. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that right. that I didn't watch the whole thing. But yeah. Yes, no, uh, was... That playing a character that's very, you know, a, a bible character and to you know playing two and a half men to charm like you have played the spectrum of characters in your career wow uh yeah i mean <laughs> <laughs> from the leader of the dark on lost girl to mary magdalene in a, a <laughs> in a period piece <laughs> yes i guess that pretty much runs the spectrum of what you you know it's it's out there for sure <laughs> it's out there it is and is forever you yeah. know and and being canadian and getting on big american shows how did you start landing these kind of shows in in vancouver and oh, other I places you've them. worked i didn't land them in vancouver i didn't I, think so I moved, yeah i moved to los angeles and then you and know, that's how it yeah i mean journey all over again in la to create you know uh, a reputation and a name for myself there where but, people finally started giving me opportunities there and that's how that happened but that took you know that took many years and um and you know time and persistence and and uh just sticking it out and just you know you just keep going uh and so eventually much. those opportunities come you know i got like you can call it luck you can call it coincidence you can call it a combination of that and hard work i mean it's timing it's it's so many things um but uh, but yeah, I mean that you know was a culmination of many many years of working in the business and people getting to know me and um, you know and the different studios and networks getting to know me in Los Angeles like the CBSs of the world you know CBS Warner Brothers like all so it's Fox you know it's just it's time. And like I said, it can happen quick for some people. It didn't for me, you know, for me, it was sort of a slow burn. It, it still is <laughs> but like, oh. like waves, you know, of stuff like, uh, but, um, but I've been very lucky to work consistently and, and have the opportunity to do a variety of different shows in very many, many different genres, which, um, you know, I, I feel lucky because a lot of people don't get to do that. Um, so I'm fortunate that I do and and that I continue to, um, which is great because I love what I do. Yes, we're very excited to see the Kevin Sorbo um, project, uh, Po-Twins. Po 
Pot wins, yeah. Me, you okay. and me both. <laughs> I, yes. haven't, I haven't seen it yet. And I wore my hair all all crazy curly in it, which I'm not oh, sure. Oh, beautiful. I saw some pictures. Yeah, beautiful. It's well, thank you. I'm glad you I think like so. it. It's very big. Yes, very different look for you. <laughs> I like well, it. Is it natural or no? It's natural. Yeah, my natural hair is um is very curly and frizzy and mm. fine. And it was during the pandemic, so I wasn't getting like pieces put in, you know, like I didn't have access to the things that I usually would have had access to during a shoot. And um, so I was like, well, screw it. It's August. We're going to be fighting humidity and heat. And we were. Um, <laughs> my hair's <laughs> its own thing anyways. We might as well just let it do its thing. And, you know, it was the first time I've ever worn it curly for a show. I was really kind of self-conscious about it because Oh no, yeah. I love it. A new look is like a new character, you know? I just think it's so cool. Good for you. Oh, I keep going with this look. Every, any look on you is perfect. Uh, you know, like we are a hundred percent like <laughs> there for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you've worked with some of the biggest, all of them really, uh, the biggest stars like ever. Um, from Chad Michael Murray, which was, he was on Riverdale not too long ago. He's getting back into it. Can you believe that? That's awesome. Did uh, he ever leave? He, not that he ever left, but you know, <laughs> when he came back to Riverdale, like for me as an audience member, you know, because of, you know, right, after that show, no, I just no. didn't see him like the way I saw him on so much stuff, but I, I seen you lot. Sorry, Chad. I, I love you, Chad. I'm not, I'm going off, but um, you're in so much, uh, so many shows, like everything. And some people, they only do some, you know, here and there. So it's noted for the audience. You know, that's why people know you so well, because you're when you turn on the show and then you, you go, OK, I'm going to turn on a new one. And you're a part of that show, too. Like, literally, you are very famous. You, and <laughs> it's hard for you to see that, I guess. Not that, you know, like you've been on E.T., like you've been on every show ever. But um you know, it's just incredible that you're so down to earth and you have so many credits. Like I can't even like tell the audience all the shows that you've been in, but you guys, you have to just understand that what, you know, Emmanuel has said is true. Keeping on going, not letting people, you know, truly stop your dream and just going with what you know is, is right for you, you know, no matter what they say, because, um, if somebody, you know, like you has been around the world uh, can do it, it shows other people, like, okay, if you put your mind to it, you can achieve, you know, being an actor in the world. So congratulations. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think, uh, I think if you want anything bad enough, you know, you can have it. Uh, it, it may, it, it, it's, it's just a matter of, you know, perseverance and really wanting it badly enough really I mean and I think along the way you have to listen to people and 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 take the advice of people who've been down the same road and have it you know have solid uh information and good things for you to think about but at the same time be discerning with what you uh what you hold on to and what you discard uh, because everyone has an opinion um and you know whatever and also people also everyone also has a butthole so you know <laughs> <laughs> we all yeah we all we all live and breathe i really yeah. hope that people check out your website uh fluffball and that they can donate or follow you more and yes. uh, you know pretty much just uh, google your name you know i'm the worst at saying your last name I don't know why I can't say it. You know, I'm feeling so like insecure to like mess up your name because I'm such a fan. <laughs> so Emmanuel, yes, Emmanuel Vogue, like Vogue. I like that. Emmanuel yes, like Vogue. Vogue. Yes, like Vogue. It is. It's very, very <laughs> like that. So yeah. you guys definitely look up more uh, work of Emmanuel Vogue and enjoy the interview for the podcast. And you'll be seeing her in the next issue of I'm Here with Meg. Awesome.